doing an activity with you and that it this is where you will be putting your answers and then as we're going along if you have any ideas that you've tried at your campus we really like to hear about them so go ahead and share your ideas here and we will come back to this padlet throughout the presentation so that um we can just share what everybody else is is um is doing at their campus um so what we wanted to go over is just some ideas that we've been trying out. Lisa and I do have our virtual book club that we run that is um, kind of a citywide book club where we invite people from different districts and even um, from New Mexico, right, Lisa? We, yep, have we, have, we, have, we have participants from Carlsbad, New Mexico, Artesia, uh, Midland, Odessa, so all over. And not just librarians, teachers, um, anybody who is interested, actually, so. So and we just, put, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry, Lisa. We've been doing this for probably three months. We did a, an in-person one in December that was just awesome. And we had such a good time. We thought, why not try a virtual one since we we're stuck with virtual to anyway, might as well make the most of it. So it's been a really good experience. So, so we just wanna share some of the ideas that we've come up with as we've been doing this virtual book club. and. Mind you, we don't have all the answers and, and that's where we want you to participate and share some ideas that you've tried at your campus and and maybe we can come up with a bank of, of ideas to get everybody started as we continue with the next school year. So the first idea is how do we begin? Um, using a virtual book club, it, it starts with promotion. So we suggest, uh, we have all these things that we suggest that you can get to promote your book club um, first one is Canva, and Lenny is going to be doing another session after this one regarding Canva. Um, but Canva is a website that you can uh, create forms, both digital and print, um, as well as things for like Instagram, um, Facebook. So if you're looking to create something that's visual for your uh, participants to, to get engaged and, and interested in your book club, Canva is one of the ways to go. Um, we do encourage social media. I don't know about you. I was a little bit nervous um, during this whole COVID situation because I actually opened up an Instagram at that time to try to get to the to the kids. And I was a little nervous, but um, you know, little by little I've been I've been playing with Instagram and, and trying to um, connect with with my patrons. Um, the community, especially a lot of our parents use Facebook. So um, trying to, to take a step further and, and going into social media, those are some of the avenues you can try aside from Twitter. We are very lucky that our school district lets us do our own web pages. So, you know, use them to your advantage um, in addition to like emails that we send to our faculty and staff. So really it's, it's who you are trying to reach for your book club. Thinking of, do you want to just start with the students and see how that goes? Do you want to try to open it up to the teachers and parents? Um, and through doing that, you can think of some themes that you want to run through your book club. And this is something that you already do. You know, a lot of our libraries have themes throughout the year. So thinking of doing a book club that follows a theme um, just to get you started. Um, having contests and prizes. So this might be enticing to, to get new participants to join you, whether it's in your book club or other activities you have in your library. We will be going over badges, how to make digital badges and hopefully print some out to uh, make stickers. And um, Yvonne will be showing us later on how to use Cricut. So uh, maybe if you have a Cricut, you can use those to create badges. And just thinking about having book bingos and special guests from either the community or um, even reaching out to authors and publishers to try to get um, special guests to join your book club. Um, I hope that Miss Lori from Isleta Elementary doesn't mind. This is an example of what you can do with social media. She is um, she's very good about sharing what books she reads, and she actually tagged the author, and the author wrote back and said, oh, like, by the way, here's a curriculum and discussion guide. So remember to use your, your um, hashtags to promote your social media and your book club, and you never know what might happen because of it. Oh. 
So the next step is how do you pick the book? Because there's so many to choose from, right? So many books, so little time, right? So a couple of things that we looked at, and again, you may have even more answers and we're we're teaching like a pirate. We're stealing ideas from all over <laughs> and using them. So, so um, please feel free to join in and throw in any ideas you may have. One of the book clubs that we uh, have tried or have uh, participated in is the whole read. Everybody reads the same book um, at the same time. And then discussion is built around that particular book. And uh, so that's, uh, some people feel more comfortable with that because everybody is on the same page, so to speak. Um, but that might not be as attractive to your participate all of your participants as you might like. So you might try thematic. Maybe you're choosing, uh, everybody's gonna read about the Arctic, but you can choose any book you want on the Arctic. Uh, maybe it's a theme based on um, best villains and everybody has to find a book that has a great villain. You guys can choose. Individual choice. This is the one that we're doing for our virtual book club with our uh, teachers and librarians now. And everyone brings a book that they've been reading that they think is awesome. And they come and talk about that book and share it with us. So uh, you can choose how you want your book club to go. The best thing I think is when you ask your participants. So maybe you start off with one type of book choice and then you say, okay, so we tried this. What would you like to try next? And that way you're giving them options because choice is key. Um, and if you're interested, you can join us for our virtual book club every other Tuesday, six to seven, just a little plug there. So just let us know. It has been really awesome um, and interesting connections. And we always share some great ideas, not even just about the books, but all kinds of things. So if you're interested, please join us. You can contact Karina or me and we'll send you a link and jump on in. So the next part is after you have uh, decided that you're going to go forward with this book club and you've decided more or less whether you want to read as a whole group or a, uh, follow a theme or individually, you're here at your meeting, now what do you do? Um, we do have some in, um, activities that you can start off with. So we are actually going to run like a practice warm up. Uh, let's say you guys are part of our book club and this is the book that we are going to read. Um, pretend that you don't know what this book is, if you know what this book is. <laughs> On our Padlet, what we want you to do is we want you to participate and practice guessing who or what you think this is. So just looking at the book cover, what do you see? What do you notice? Um, you can go ahead and put that in the Padlet or um, at this time, if you wanna just unmute yourself, telling us what do you notice about the book cover? Or chat, you can put or it in chat. chat. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing we're doing is just what do you see? Oh, let's see. Start night. It's an award winner. It's a John Newberry Award winner. Ooh. And that's very important to notice because if it's an award winner, it must have already made its way through multiple channels to to become nominated and then be given the award. Oh, is this a wrinkle in time? <gasps> Look at you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I said that, you know, just looking at the picture, I'm like, oh my gosh, that looks like a wrinkle in time. So, so to do that with any book, you can do that with any book or um, maybe even an illustration within the book if there if there is one. So on our on our Padlet, we do see some ideas of like, well, there's kids flying in the sky. There are ghosts and there's witches um i see somebody that has it looks like a troll um so the first thing again we just want the the participants to see well what do you notice first of all in the book cover um from there based on what you see what genre do you think this is it's non-fiction definitely <laughs> <laughs>
So any ideas on the genre? I had somebody that wrote adventure. Cool. Fantasy. Yeah, fantasy, sci-fi. Yes, okay. So the last question, um, what decade do you think the, the book takes place in based on the drawings, um, on the illustrations in the cover? What decade do you think this takes place in? Ooh, 1960s, 70s? Just by the illustrations alone, right? <laughs> the and then even you see a, a nice mix of um, how Becky said the color and, and there's even one character that doesn't have color on, on her illustration. So this activity is is just a way to um, get your participants to to focus on on what they see and try to entice them in the in the book that you're going to be reading if you're doing it whole group. Um, this is also a good opportunity for a book talk based on what um, your audience is is saying to you. You can you can book talk this this book and hopefully promote um, the content with it. So this is just one activity you can do in the beginning of your book club to try to get um, your participants interested in some of the books that you're reading. So if you are doing one of those book clubs where everybody brings their own individual book, um, this is a good, again, opportunity for a book talk and having them share what they saw. You know, was the audience correct in their ideas? Yes or no, based on, on what the, audi the audience says. Um, Lisa and I did forget to share in the beginning of our presentation that we are going to be giving a prize out. So um, make sure that on your Padlet, I do see some anonymous. If you guys can also put your names, <laughs> um, that will a prize. If you're anonymous. <laughs> so sorry, we forgot to include that. <laughs> So here's a possible agenda. And again, these are this is just something that we have found works, um, but you can certainly do an agenda in any way that you think is effective. These are just ideas. And if you found something that works better for you or your participants, then by all means use it, right? Whatever works best. But this is just one possible way. One thing that we do is we have introductions, especially um, for our virtual club, because we have people from all over and people drop in and out of the club. It's not a everybody doesn't come every other Tuesday. So we do introductions to help connect people that maybe don't know each other. So, uh, again, those people we have from Midland and from Carlsbad and so on, this is a chance for them to get to connect. And even here in El Paso, across districts and stuff like that, it's kind of cool to, and Las Cruces and Almogordo. So it's been um, good for that. Uh, then we have some kind of warm up. And um, so we have had trivia games. Uh, we did one based on Harry Potter, and that was really fun. Um, a Pulp Fiction book blurb. And this is a cool little feature that I saw on NPR on Instagram, actually. So Instagram isn't all just, you know, <laughs> photo ops. Um, so the idea was you read the blurb on the back of a book and then uh, your participants have to guess or write what they think the first line of the book is. Uh, and it was pretty fun. It was pretty cool to do that. Uh, you could have character dress up days. Uh, and it would, is really fun if you have everybody dress up as your favorite villain or dress up as your favorite animal character or, or whatever. Uh, we have the guess who what, which is what Karina was just showing initially with the book cover. So you kind of guess who, guess what this is. Maybe they write a dating profile for one of the characters, which is kind of fun, uh, or a Facebook profile. And those can be pretty fun to do and then they can share them out say in Padlet or just in the chat or or just read them out loud just for fun. And then you could have a Kahoot game, which is also uh, easy to do. And I'm sure you guys all have used Kahoot. So it's nothing, you know, earth shattering or anything like this, but they're just fun ways to get started and start talking and get those people thinking and participating. So these are just some of the ideas for our warm ups. Okay, Karina. So if there's any other ideas that you've tried, remember that on our Padlet, we do have a spot for ideas. We'd love it if you could share, and that way we just have a bank of ideas to pull from later on. Um, one of the ideas, I'm sorry? I said, yes, please, share. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, one of the ideas to, to start off book discussion, um, 
you know, usually after the warm up, that's that's when the meat of your meeting comes. You know, what do you do to to uh, get the participants to discuss? So some ideas that we have tried are round robin, um, where anybody who's willing to share and wants to share gets the opportunity to to take a few minutes and talk about their book. Um, if you are doing this through like a mode, let's say for example, Google Classroom, if you have uh, questions so that the participants can add comments to them, that might be a good way to start off in the beginning, um, just guiding questions to help them feel comfortable and sharing what's in their book. Sometimes they don't know where to start. Um, we do suggest having open communication and, and the way you can do that is through um, both your verbal um, communication, but also using your chat if you're doing a Google Meet or a Zoom. Um, the chat is very valuable, especially if you have those participants that are a little bit shy in speaking. Um, you you might have some silent participants in that. They, they want to be there, they want to participate, but they just participate in a different way, whether that's through the chat or just being present, that's the way that they want to participate. Um, and listening also to the needs of your group. Um, your group might be a little bit um, shy in the beginning, so they might need their cameras off and that's totally okay. Um, so one of the ideas that I got was from this book by Kylene Beers and Robert Props called Disruptive Thinking, Why How We Read Matters. Um, they suggest to get the students talking is um, thinking about what is inside the book like basically what is the book about um and this might be a little bit hard in the beginning so what they suggest asking first is what's going on in your head um was there something that the author wrote that confused you or that surprised you um those are questions that you can ask just to get the the participants thinking what's going on in my head as i'm reading um another thing that they brought up is what's going on in your heart were there um, feelings that that came out because of what was written? If so, what were those feelings? Were they positive or negative? Um, we want our participants to engage in the book rather than um, rather than feel like they have to answer a certain way. You know, our kids that are used to being asked like, "Well, make an inference," and what do you think the the theme of the story is? But in book club, we really want them to to look at what's going on with their own thinking and their own feelings as they're reading. And after they've they've gotten that, maybe they'll be able to tell you, well, what's in the book? What is this book about? Lisa, did you want to add anything to that? Um, I was going to say in our own virtual uh, book club, there have been uh, almost every meeting will have one or two uh, participants who maybe are not sharing their books, but they always say something wonderful about being there. So uh, they'll send an email later saying, hey, uh, I know I didn't participate, I'm sorry about that, but I got some great ideas for books to read, it was really fun. Um, and so don't be discouraged if they're silent, they're still there and that's, that's key because you never know where that's gonna lead. They might speak up next time. You might be giving them great ideas for things to read and broaden their mind and um, ways to talk about books that maybe they're not familiar with. So don't don't be discouraged if, if your participants are silent at first. Totally okay. That's so true. And um, I was looking on our Padlet and we do have a few suggestions for ideas. So. Um, Cool. Julia mentioned like a scavenger hunt. So maybe at the beginning or the end of a book, doing a scavenger hunt just to get the students or participants enticed to join. Uh, Miss Elena wrote, the person who recommended the book tells about the author before the discussion. And also learning about the author is, is very powerful because um, who knows, maybe that author might just be um, some, somebody that writes in the genre that I like, and now I know somebody new. Um, so that's very powerful to know who the author is and and get to know more of their their books. Absolutely. Any other cool ideas? Um, intro with the interview of the authors. Cool. That'd be fun. Or also using the Blue Bonnet books, which is which is very um, important too, because they're all diverse. <laughs> absolutely. And the Mavericks, you know, for the older audiences and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, award winners, definitely. Because as we said, they've already been vetted. You already know they've gone through a whole lot of steps to get where they are. So good idea. So here's some other things that we have for our possible agenda for our book club. After you've had your book discussion, at the end, you might want to say, what are some of the takeaways? What worked for you this week in the book club? Were there certain things that you thought worked really well? Um, maybe if you're having a book club with teachers, you can ask them, open it up. What worked well for you in your classroom this week? It's OK. <laughs> you can actually let people say nice things about what's going on with their world. And goodness knows we need more good news. So um, what worked well? What are some things from the book club from discussion that you think you're going to be still thinking about next week. So it's what are they going to carry forward? Because again, that's what we want, right? We want it to have a lasting impact. So open it up for discussion about things like that as well. Some of the ideas we have for closing activities, um, breakout EDU, if any of you all, any of you all tried breakout EDU yet? Um, so they have a virtual, I know doing it in person is way fun, but they also actually also have a virtual version that you can use, which is easy to plug in if you're doing a virtual book club. So you can have a good time with that. And that can take a long time to do, or it can be short, depending upon the activity you create. Um, you can make it super simple, or you can make it really complex and make it something they have to work on before they get back to the book club the next time you meet. That would be kind of fun, too. Um, one of the things that we were talking about at the very beginning for uh, promotion, at the end we can give out badges for certain things and here's some ideas that um, we got from Audible, they had some cool ideas for badges and you can create any kind of badge you want, it's up to you. You can use Canva, there are many other ways that you can uh, create badges or different awards. We could announce winners and then this is a fun one that I hadn't heard about before but Kanina introduced me to and that's Monster Quiz. So without further ado, <laughs> we will be we'll be holding a monster quiz in a bit. Um, I did want to give some examples about the digital badges. So these are badges that I made using Canva. So Canva is great because um, they do have a lot of templates that you can use. And so all of these are actually templates that were already created. And I just either changed the wording that was in there or I added um, the wording. So this is something that you can think of giving to your participants at the end of a at the end of a book club or at the end of a novel set. Um, I was actually thinking of using these to make stickers because I don't know about you guys, but the kids love stickers. Um, so these are super easy to print, especially if you if you've used Canva before. Uh, like I said, Lenny's going to be giving us more information in a bit about Canva. So. Um, Without further ado, I do want to share an activity, and it's called Monster Quiz. So this is from L Smart Learning Suite Online, and they do have um, a bank of other activities that you can do and other games that you can play. But uh, Monster Quiz is my favorite because the premise is basically um, you are divided into groups. Each group is giving, given a monster egg, and you are asked questions that, of course, we create. Um, if you get it right, the monster egg will grow until it hatches. If you get it wrong, the monster's just in there trying to wiggle himself out. So if you decide to do uh, one of these closing activities, um, you know, it could be book related, um, or if you just want to do it as a fun way to a team, a team challenge that you want to bring um, that collaboration with your, your, with your patrons, you can do that. Um, it could be a comp it could be used for comprehension if you're trying to see, you know, where are they in the book? Are they okay? Um, it could be used for trivia. And the whole point is that um, you want it to be a no pressure gaming. It's it's all in good fun. You just want to have them participate and and enjoy enjoy being in your book club. So I am going to ask you guys uh, to jump on to my game on hellosmart.com, and that is a class ID. We do want to play a small game right now just to practice and and review some of the stuff that we've discussed so far. So if you can either click the link on the agenda or if you're on my slides, click the Firestormers picture and the class ID is 457821. It's also in the chat for you. 
Thank you so much, Becky. You're welcome. So join as a guest. Yes, if you join as a guest, it's um, you can create your account later. Um, HelloSmart.com is a uh, smart learning suite. All the activities there are free for you to use. So you do not have to pay. They do have a paid version. Um, and it gives you a little bit more uh, resources to use, but this monster quiz is actually free. So we'll get started in a bit. Okay. And this is just going to be a small five question game to practice. And so you guys can see how hellosmart.com works. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get started in a bit. I think I'm missing just a handful of people. Um, I'm there. <laughs> um, so if you are running this with the class, it does give you the option to divide into groups. So what the students will be seeing is as they're logging on, um, they won't get, they won't be able to start until you actually press start. Um, you can decide whether you want to move students to be in a particular group. So if you have a group of students that you know work well together and you want to physically move their, their names to another spot so that they're together, you can do that. Um, the questions will appear on your screen, but on my screen, what we'll be showing is the actual little monster eggs as they're either hatching or as they're wiggling out. Um, and this is good to project because the kids love to see how their monster is going. And then it also shows them their name when they get something correct. So their name will pop up and that's a good opportunity as um, their teacher to be giving them that encouragement, like saying, oh, Lisa, you got it correct, good job. Or, you know what, fire breathers, you're doing great. Your egg is almost catching. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So your, the questions will appear on your um, device. Mm. So these are all our participants and we're going to be divided into teams. Okay. So as you can see, uh, let me mute this. Um, as you are doing this in the class, sorry, I don't know why it's not muted. Okay. If you're doing this with the class, you can easily move participants. So if you know, oh, you know what, they're not good to tell, you move. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get started. Good job, Angie and Sandra. <laughs> Good job, Gloria. Nice work, bookworm. Nice work, Marta and Mari. Uh-oh, some of your eggs are moving. Right now, the frost spiders, I see an arm coming out of their egg. The Mega Melters have an arm sticking out also. Heat Wavers, I see some wings coming out. Icebreakers, you're close. I see the tail popping out. First place, we have Mega Melters. <laughs> Second place, we have the Frost Spiders. Uh-oh, come on guys, I see those little eggs moving. Nice job, Norma. Good job, Carmen. Nice job, so Snow Blinders is in third, followed by Fire Divers. <laughs> Good 
Good job, Heat Wavers. Now we have Monster Boxers. Now it's between the Ice Breakers and the Boom Boxers. Good job, Ice Breakers. Boom Boxers, you can do it. <laughs> So as you can see, this is um, a little fun activity for the students to participate in. They love to see how the monsters come out. And as the seasons come, um, each monster changes. So even though it's, um, it's, it's like a thematic. So during Halloween, they have the monsters dressed somewhat differently. This is the summer theme. So that's why you see the fire divers there with his little grill. Mm. Good job, boom boxers. Oh, you're hearing, uh, you're getting a lot of comments about how cool this is and <laughs> uh, what's even better about this is there is a review option. So let's say, for example, you were trying to do a whole uh, book. It tells you, um, it gives you the information per team, but then it also lets you review questions. So if you're wanting to see um, how your class did or how the, the participants did, it tells you you know, this was the most selected answer and it shows you a pie chart of what the answers look like. And then you can see the team scoreboard. So what I do like about this is that it doesn't, um, it cycles the question. So if the student got it wrong the first time, it takes off that wrong answer and it cycles it back for them to do it again. So this is um, a good example to use for non-pressure gaming. Um, so that way the students don't feel so overwhelmed by it you want them to have fun so i'm glad that you guys found monster quiz so exciting it is free for you to use you will have to write your own questions even though they do have some pre-made ones but if you're wanting to do something specific you can create your own questions oh this is a great alternative to cahoots and some of our other programs i love it especially because like i said they love to see their little monster growing and you know, they put pressure on their other teammates to say, you know what, come on, we're almost there, we're almost there. And it encourages them because you, you see their names pop up, so that's an opportunity for you to give them feedback and just encourage them to continue. I like it. I like it. You're getting a lot of great job. <laughs> Love it. It's even great for high schoolers. Somebody wrote, so Definitely. Definitely. So... What's the big concept? Never trust anyone who has not brought a book with them by Lemony Snicket. <laughs> <laughs> the big concept, things that we thought we'd really like you to walk away with from this uh, presentation. Number one, and most importantly, is you can do it. And you are already doing some kind of version of this already. I know that you are. Uh, maybe you did an in-person book club. Maybe you've been doing book talks. So just an easy step to, to expand on this. And because we don't know what the fall is going to look like or the spring, um, <laughs> or next week, <laughs> or yeah, more talk about. <laughs> but, but this is another option to really connect with your students. Um, and so don't be intimidated and think that it's, um, that it's a really big project and really tough. You can start off small. You, um, we're already in a tech world. We're already, um, you are already in a tech world. You're doing this all the time, every day. And I'm sure that you're coming up with thousands of ideas, just seeing these, it kind of sparks up like, hey, I could fit in this that I'm already doing. So don't be intimidated and don't be afraid to start something new. And, and um, also don't be disappointed or discouraged if the first couple of times it doesn't quite catch just keep going and try to adjust things as you can um and uh, and don't give up because you never know where it's going to lead um participation reading is fun and we want it to be fun for students they're so tired of being told what they have to read it's nice to have the chance to read something fun that they love and it encourages reading because then we're planting the seed even if they don't even if they're not participating verbally in your in your book club you're planting the seeds you're giving them ideas so don't be discouraged you are powerful and you're making things happen so those are the takeaways that we had yeah so um 
before we leave, we do have this opportunity to take questions. And I know I had, um, I have one that's in our parking lot on Padlet. So I do want us to um, discuss it if we can, Lisa. The question was, would you give another example of the Pulp Fiction book blurb, please? Sure. So you can take any book. They suggested getting the the cheesiest book you can find uh, <laughs> because then it's, it's just fun, right? Like the a cheesy romance or, or you know, like um, B fiction kind of thing. And you read the back of the blurb to your team or you could have it posted on Padlet as Kanina suggested. And then you read that out loud and then everyone takes a chance at writing the first line of the book, what they think that would be. Another spin off of that that we also tried is um, you read the first line of the book and then people have to kind of guess what they think it's about or guess the genre. So it's just getting them thinking. Karina, do you want to add to that? Um, I think that the book, the fiction, uh, let me say it correctly, sorry. The Pulp Fiction book blurb is really good when you're trying to incorporate writing into your book club um, because not only are they given, they're showing, not only are you showing different books and, and genres to this to your participants, but if you're trying to encourage them to write, um, this gives them the opportunity to, to use an example of what's already given. So if I have a book and, and we just read the, the blurb in the back, um, you know, our participants are going to try to write the first line and we give them some time and then we actually read the first line um, to them and then we get to hear their ideas of what the first line is. Um, how Lisa said, you know, using the actual book, using the book cover to just try to entice them and get some ideas of what, what's going on in their mind is good. It was cool to see what people came up with in the first lines too. They were fun. They're, they're fun and, and you get to see also everybody's different styles. Um, you get to see, like I, I love young adult, but in some of our, our book clubs, we have readers who, who love to read, you know, um, adult fiction books. And so they're enticed to say, oh, you know what, this young adult book doesn't sound like it's, it's too, um, it's too young or it's too, um, like lower level for me, it's something that I might be interested. Um, we have another question, Lisa, and it's, do you have students and adults in the book club? So this is a good question. In, in our book club that we're doing now, our virtual book club, it's only been adults at this point. But um, you could have any audience you wanted to, maybe even if you're trying to, I mean, we're all supposed to do that community outreach, right? And if we, if we reach them through social media or we reach them through, um, uh, emails home or even flyers or whatever we need to do. Again, we're all doing virtual right now. So uh, it would definitely be some sort of digital communication. You could do a book club maybe with uh, community members, um, parents. Um, you could do teachers. You could do teachers and students if you wanted to. Um, I think it's a, it would be a different kind of book club if you had teachers and students together at the same time, because students often are wanting to say the right answer to impress their teachers, or they might be a little intimidated by that. Um, but it's also really a good modeling thing too. So, you know, it doesn't mean that you couldn't do teachers and students together. I think it's also a great way to show students how to talk about books, how to get something more out of a book other than the theme and the main character and the conflict, right? Um, and it's also good as teachers to see where your students' heads are, right? Where they really are thinking, where they might be a little freer than they would be in the classroom. So yes, I think you could do teachers and students at the same time. I think it's just gonna be, have a different flavor, but there's nothing wrong with that, right? And um, I think if you were to incorporate your teachers and students, um, also just giving them the, kind of the framework of what you're expecting, um, that's why I love the book, disruptive thinking because it doesn't follow the well. Let me let me get the inference of the story, or let me make an inference from the story. You can easily, as you're starting your book club, book club, saying, you know what? These are the three main questions we, we're going to cover. You know, um, you know what's going on in your head. What questions do you have? What what things um, confused you, or what's going on in your heart? And that way, 
the students and teachers don't feel pressured to follow that that um, norm of you know let's let's look at this book academically. Um, um, another question we have on our parking lot is: Do you meet after several chapters or just at the end of the book? We've been meeting just every other week, and sometimes people will have finished a book. Sometimes people are in the middle. Sometimes they're just starting a book. So it really just, um, it's more about the timing rather than where they are on the book, because if you're waiting for everybody to reach chapter six, then it becomes high pressure and, oh my gosh, <laughs> I didn't read my book today. Or um, So I think, I think making it more about just a consistent time, we're gonna do every other Tuesday, we're going to meet every other Friday, whatever works for you. I think that works better than trying to wait on everybody to be on the exact same page. Um, especially because my first year at Isleta, I did do a book club with students. And uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. Some of the students just went because I fed them. <laughs> so um, the goal was to get students there and they got there. And in the end, you know, they started to learn from the other from the other students. You know what? I may not have got into chapter three. But what I did learn is that, you know, our our main character had this struggle and, and you know, we talked about it. So um, it's really how you want to run your book club, like Lisa was saying. Um, if you do want to do one of those where you're reading the same book and go chapter by chapter, then it's probably a good suggestion to maybe read some of it together. That way you're, you're staying in the same spots throughout the, the entirety of the book. Um, Everybody loves to be read to. Yes. <laughs> um, I hope we answered that question. Um, another question was, how do you, how do students and adults get their hands on the book you are reading? So there's different ways to do this. Um, if you're doing individual choice, I mean, the book comes to their hands however they want to. I mean, if we're um, if we're open and we're checking out, then you know they'll have the opportunity to check out any book. Um, we do have, right now in this summer, we have Sora and Audiobook Sync. Um, Becky, would you mind putting those in the chat for me? Sora? Um, uh, and audiobooksync.com. So audiobooksync.com every summer gives um, two free books per week for you to download and keep. So each week deals with the theme and those two books match on a theme. So if you know that there's a book coming up that you're interested in doing a book club on, you can have your students download the book and it's free. These books are geared more towards uh, middle and high school, so elementary they don't have. Um, there are other websites that have free books online all the time. You just have to search, but there, there are literally hundreds of them. So if you wanted to just share those websites with your participants, if you're all reading the same book, fine. If everybody wants to choose something different, that works too. Usually, um, like the goal is, the goal is depending on also your campus. I mean, if you have a supportive campus and your principal is willing to give you funds to do that, um, you know, that's always a plus, but I know that not all campuses are like that. So, you know, just thinking about meeting with your group and trying to make it more of an individual um, choice. That way you don't have to purchase books for every student if you're not able to as a campus. That's a good idea. Um, go ahead. I just was going to say that um, someone was saying that they really liked uh, the structure you provided for the topic, um, that it's focused and it's what it's flexible enough to meet your club's needs. Um, somebody was asking if you can share the sites that have free books. And I know one of them you said was uh, audiobooksync.com, which I've been using all summer long. And what was the other one that you said, Flora? Sora? Sora, oh, yeah. That one's with Sora. That one's with the audio, um, the audible uh, audio book. And, and then, um, I'm sorry, Becky. Audible is also giving out, um, is also allowing free books to be read. Um, and they didn't give a deadline. They're, they're going to be doing this until I guess COVID is over. <laughs> so Audible is also doing that too. I'll tell you right now, I did a, 
a mini Monday on eBooks not too long ago. And so there's also open eBooks for your students. That's a huge collection of eBooks that are available to students for free. It's a big collection. Another one that I was kind of amazed, uh, but it's a, a music streaming service. Oh, what's the popular one? Um, Spotify? Spotify, I think is the one. It has free audio books on there. There are free audio books on Spotify. So, you know, you get a basic Spotify account and you can get access to some free audio books. So there, and then if you don't already have a public library card, you can go uh, to the public library card, uh, the public library website and sign up for a digital card for free. And that's open to anybody in the city. It's very fast and easy. It took me less than five minutes to sign my nephew up and you get access to their entire digital collection, which is it's really a great collection. So if you don't already have a, a library card, get online and sign up for a card. And what's good about the library card also, how Becky was saying is that, let's say for example, you have students who don't live in our like El Paso County, because if you're not in El Paso County, you might not get a card for free. You might have to pay for it. They do have the classroom cards for students who actually come to school in the El Paso County, but they just don't live here. So that's another option for students who aren't within our county. Yes, class cards allow them to check out three books. So and as opposed to a regular card, which lets you check out like 30, I think, right. like a huge limit. So, so lots of options out there. Yeah, awesome. Any other questions for the ladies here while we have them? They'll be here until the end, so they can <laughs> answer questions later too. But um, you have a lot of positive feedback. I encourage you, you to go back and, and read through the chat. Um, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and put some of those options. I know that Miss Carmen on, on our parking lot put Mac and Bia also has multi-user ebooks. So all the ones, all the suggestions we're given right now, I'll go back into the slides and I'll add them there so we have them handy. Paula also still has those free ebooks too, just so you know, and and um, ebooks and collection. So at least till August thirty first, if you're signed up. So just so you know, if you're doing something for the summer with kids. All right. Hi Lisa. Hi Lisa. Hi Karina. Thank you so much. This is Gloria. Hi, Gloria. Um, I just want to let everybody know that I've gone to their virtual book clubs this summer, and it is awesome. It's uh, all of us are a little stir crazy, so to talk to adults about books is always <laughs> welcome. Um, the ideas have been great. I have done the traditional whole group um, book club, and I, I'm on the same boat. How do we get everybody on board? In terms of, so I know the social media really works. I was wanting to ask all the other librarians what they thought of the best way to get everything started. Yes. So if any of you have any suggestions for for all of us, you know, we, we have some time, right? Right. Um, yeah. Okay. We have, we have about seven minutes, so you so know, we have think about those ways that you're getting your kids to your book clubs uh, in real life that can transfer into like virtual book clubs. <laughs> you know, I think that that playing games, like that monster game that we played, that's really fun. That can attract kids to join. Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, if, if, possible like maybe like a bingo card or something where kids can like say okay i've read a, a scary book i've read a this kind of book like and like a bingo card and when they're finished like you could mail them you know even just a card saying congratulations what a great job stick a few stickers in the card or even if you know you can like five dollar gift card to like mcdonald's or you know something small but you know meaningful 
that you can maybe mail out to them and that kind of gets kids interested in, in joining. I don't know. I saw a cool idea of a passport. So you give the, the kids have a passport, which yes. is great since we're all stuck at home. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to get out. <laughs> so you give them a passport to the library and it's kind of along what you were talking about, Becky, where they, they read different things throughout the library. So they read, a, they read um, something in the 600s, then they get this kind of sticker and then they get this and they collect so many stickers in their passport and then they're, um, they're a diamond or they're a, you know, you give them different awards and just like you were saying, but it's kind of cool to give them a little passport, little stamps in it as a passport. You've and been to this awesome. And you know what, you can definitely do badges like you guys were talking about earlier, badges in a passport um, yeah, and I think cool. badges for high schoolers might even be better. They might like that, you know, more than than a sticker. Um, and I think like it would be neat to do like a travel theme, maybe, you know, reading books about other countries or that take place in other countries. Maybe you need to read a book from Ireland, you know, either a book about Ireland or takes place in Ireland or Irish. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, so, so um as far as the digital badges go, um, like I said, I got the templates from Canva uh and I just suggested the wording. So it might have had like the one that, that has um the planet, it had actually written something else written. I just changed it to science fiction. Um if you want a copy of the digital ones that I've made, just let me know, you know, through email or or through the chat and I'll be more than happy to send you that template. Oh, and I'm seeing here um, Mari from Hanks, I believe. She says that she uses her Remind account for her That's book good. club. So that kind of keeps her kids like, you know, they know when to show up. And um, she plans on uh, reaching out to them and maybe even doing a Google Classroom to continue to have activities, which I think is a fabulous idea. Use right. that resource. It's free and we have access to it get that Google Classroom going for your library and make your library virtual. Um, somebody was saying that Peter Piper has coupons for small pizzas and Dairy Queen lets you send digital gift cards. So that's interesting. Um, oh, and Gloria wants to know, is your virtual book club tomorrow or next week, uh, Tuesday? Let's say next Tuesday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then... Um, well, I'll send then, out a reminder. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Lenny says that he's been asked, uh, he's asked recommendations from English teachers for kids that read, um, and he gives them a special invitation saying they're handpicked or recommended. Oh, nice. Um, so that's kind of nice, you know, and even for those kids that maybe they're not the best readers, that they can be handpicked for another book that maybe you're not going to do something as challenging, but just fun, you know? Right. So that's awesome. Um, the book Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt is a great read and gives great insight into the Irish culture. And I saw the movie Angela's Ashes. I think I cried through most of it. It was great. Um, yeah, so lots of great ideas. Thank so. you guys so much. Thank you all for presenting. I'm so glad that you have... Um, you presented on virtual book clubs because right now, um, you know, like you said, we don't know what's going to happen in, you know, next week or, or in a month. And so we need to be prepared for whatever happens. And even if, you know, we do end up going back to the schools, virtual book clubs are, are not something that should only take place because we can't get out of the house. Virtual right. book clubs make uh, clubs accessible to everyone. I mean, maybe my mom picks me up from school early so I never get to do anything after school because she's got to get me home so she can go to work. Well, if there's a virtual book club, you can still participate even though you're already at home. That's so, true. yeah. Oh, the, uh, Gloria says that her book club loved novels in verse. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah. Maeve Binchy. I love Maeve Binchy. She's one of my favorite authors. 
all the settings of her books are in Ireland. I know that's why I picked Ireland. <laughs> they love Maeve Bitchy. That one's really great. So thank you, ladies, so much. We appreciate you presenting for us. And I hope you all uh, are going to find some great information in our next presentation with Lenny about Canva. Lenny was super uh, lucky because these ladies mentioned Canva so many times. So Lenny, are you ready to take the Thank you, guys.